Confidence is the ability to know how to handle situations effectively. Confidence comes with experience. In order to become confident, children need to trust their judgments, make responsible decisions, and confront challenging situations. How a parent reacts to their child's development of new skills and strengths is crucial in building their confidence. Parents need to know the right balance of parental involvement to promote their confidence. They need to know when to get out of the way, join in, and help their child build new competencies and guide their child to think through new situations intelligently and safely. Unstructured free play is an important time during youth that should not be overlooked. Child-driven play allows children to become more competent on their own and thus more confident as well. Play allows them to manage their stress and decrease anxiety and provides them with the chance to be creative and imaginative. They discover their own strengths and passions and develop new competencies and the resilience needed to manage future challenges. In order to build competence, parents should focus on their child's strengths and build on them. They should empower their children to make decisions and provide them with opportunities to make their own choices so they can learn from their successes and failures. Parents need to point out what a child is doing right so that they can develop the important skills to be competent. The worst thing a parent can do is to undermine a child's confidence by not allowing them to bounce back from a fall. Confidence is the belief in one's own abilities. Confidence is gained from competence. Children and teens will gain confidence when they realize that they can handle challenges and be successful. Confidence is a crucial quality to children in order for them to find their way through childhood and adolescence successfully and safely. They navigate their way by taking risks and learning from them. Confidence is necessary in order for children to recover from challenges. Children will gain confidence by demonstrating confidence and as a result, they will feel like they have power over their environments. They will be more likely to have a positive outlook on life and be more persistent and determined. Confidence that is gained in childhood will help children be successful later on in life as adults. Parents should focus on the strengths of their children and point them out so they can see the best of themselves. Knowing they have been successful in the past and can be successful again will help them be confident and get past negative behaviors that they might be exhibiting during childhood or adolescence. This will allow them to bounce back and turn their failure into a learning experience. Confidence is the key component that allows a child to excel and take the necessary steps towards positive behavioral change. Parents should express that they value qualities such as fairness and kindness. Parents need to set reasonable expectations for their children and give them genuine praise. Ginsburg talks about connections and their importance in a child's life. It's clear that most children live with someone who can take care of them, whether it's a parent, a grandparent, or another guardian. The connections that a child has with their grandparent or guardian is crucial to their emotional and mental development. For example, a child is either independent or interdependent. 
When a child is independent, they can sometimes become too comfortable with being alone. But if they are interdependent, they need the comfort and presence of others in order to work efficiently. While interdependence is an important quality to have as a child, it's something that many researchers and theorists say we want our children to outgrow and become more independent, which, according to Ginsburg, won't usually happen until adulthood. However, we also don't want our children to, out to grow up with the thought of being so independent that they become lonely and isolated. We want our children to think for themselves and feel comfortable to make their own decisions, but also to acknowledge those around them who are willing to help and offer advice when it's needed. Emotions tie in with, with the connections that we as adults and children create in life. One of those emotions is empathy. We don't want our children to be sad or hurt, but we want them to be able to recognize when someone they care about is struggling or is sad. To understand what another person is feeling and react and respond in an appropriate and helpful manner. How we respond to a child's emotions teaches them how they should respond to someone else's emotions, which in turn is developing their empathetic and sympathetic character. How our children grow up plays a factor in their own character. Ginsburg stated that a child can be very competent, confident, and deeply connected, but still not be prepared to thrive. The connections in a child's life support their confidence and competence, but if they don't have strong connections due to passive influences in their life, they will have a hard time when struggles arise. An example that Ginsburg gave was of a little girl whose parents didn't teach her skills and values, such as responsibility or the value of others. Her schooling could have been a struggle due to unresponsive teachers, and her friends could have been a dangerous group of students or peers who inevitably led her down a path of negativity. Although this is not her fault, it's now seen as her character. As educators, we are supporting all of the children who come into our classrooms, and we are the ones who are supposed to help define their character in a positive light and help them find ways to cope with their struggles. We are a solid connection for our students and can help them define their character. Character includes kindness, decent behavior, inclusion of others, responsibility, treating others well, and so much more. When a child is confident and is able to understand and recognize their competencies, they have good character and are able to make strong contributions to their, to their community and to the world around them. When a young person has the ability to improve not only themselves but their communities, they develop a sense of belonging. The type of feedback that one receives can depict the type of contributions that are given. For example, when a young adult is given positive feedback, chances are that they will contribute great things to the people around them. But if they are criticized and given only negative feedback without some sort of positive recognition, they may feel like they're not good enough and pull back on what they have to offer. Everything a young person does is significant in one way or another, but it's important that educators and other connections recognize not only the flaws, but the positive qualities that have been exhibited and use them together to help the student or child to improve and continue to grow. Children who learn to cope with stress will be better able to overcome challenges that they are confronted with in life. Adolescents who have a variety of healthy coping strategies will be more likely to turn away from dangerous quick fixes when dealing with challenges and stress. Everyone has his or her own way of responding to a problem. Some people cope by being problem focused or emotion focused. Others may avoid the situation through denial or withdrawal. Ginsberg identifies 10 components in his stress reduction plan in order to promote effective coping. The parts of his plan include identifying and addressing the problem, avoiding stress when possible, letting some things go, contributing to the world, exercising, participating in active relaxation, eating well, sleeping well, taking instant vacations, and releasing emotional tension. Parents who use and model this approach will help their children way more than any words they say or programs they enroll their children in. This plan will give children the tools they need to bounce back and be better prepared to deal with stress. The best thing that parents can do is model positive coping strategies. Having control over our children is the first step in protecting them and doing what's best for them. A key part of control is discipline. This includes self-discipline too. When a parent relinquishes a certain amount of control over a child in favor of guidance, attention, and support, children will do what they can to test the limits and boundaries. As authoritative figures, we need to be permissive, disengaged, and authoritative, meaning we need to trust our kids and be in the loop on what they are doing. 
we need to set limits and reasonable expectations, too. Children will know how loved they are, but will also have respect for themselves and for their parents, who in the end only want the best for them in life. However, an equal balance is necessary for successful parenting and appropriate control over our children. Today, the American Academy of Pediatrics said kids should be doing more of what they do best. Play. Children now ha are engaged in a lot of enrichment activities, you know, extracurricular activities, sports activities. We think that's great. We just want balance. Dr. Kenneth Ginsberg is a pediatrician and co-author of the 32-page report, which says free and unstructured play is essential for the physical, social, and emotional well-being of children. We have to understand that play, or even in school, for example, recess, um, allows kids to reboot. And as they reboot, they're going to absorb all of the rest of life's lessons more effectively. Dr. Ginsberg also says all work and no play could not only make Jack dull, it could make him depressed. We're taking care of a lot of kids who are showing the manifestations of stress, you know, the belly aches, the fatigue, they're not sleeping well enough. Um, you know, by the time they get to college, there seem to be increasing levels of anxiety and depression. But many parents fear slowing the pace means not keeping up with the Joneses or the Joneses' kids. So what do you guys want to do today? Would you that hasn't kept the Brown family from Fort Worth, Texas, from keeping two days a week free just for fun. My son looked at me and said, Mom, I just want some me time. And I said, OK. It was too much. And the parents we spoke with knew all too well about the perils of overscheduling. So I'm just curious. Do you get the sense that kids today are overscheduled? Absolutely. Well, and we actually had to make a, a conscious decision to unschedule them and to make more family time because we realized we were raising kids we didn't even see. My wife and I both teach, so we try to really underprogram as opposed to overprogram. Really? Why? Just so kids have a chance to grow up and be kids. So if you're in a quandary about how much is too much, you may want to go directly to the source. Would you rather be going to the farm or just hanging at home?